Titans, go! And everyone, welcome back to Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Charles Skaggs, back in Titans Tower once again, ready to talk the Titans season two finale with Mia Compadre, my one of my best friends, and uh, all around a really decent fellow, Jesse Jackson. How you doing, Jesse? Thank you. Uh, publicly appreciating. Charles is joining us uh, about 30 minutes early. Uh, I'm uh, trying to get a couple of things scheduled, and Charles was very kind to join us early. Um, because you know what, Charles? We have a lot, a lot to talk about in this season finale. Though the word Nightwing was never spoken in the episode. Yeah, interesting. The title's huh? episode is Nightwing. Yes. Yeah, so, yes, here at episode 49, one away from the big 50th episode of Titan Talk, we're going to talk Nightwing. And this is the, like I said, this Titan Season 2 finale. Episode 13 of Titan Season 2 just came out a couple of days ago on November 29th, 2019. Written by Richard Hatem, or Hatem, depending on your point of view, uh, who wrote um, previous episodes like the Titans Season 1 finale, Dick Grayson, uh, Rose, Connor, and uh, he's written some other good, really great episodes. But here he's paired with Greg Walker, who has not written some great episodes. He wrote... Um, Episodes Origins, Asylum, and the season two premiere, Trigon. So, and uh, directed by Carol Banker, who previously directed the season one episode, Jason Todd, and the season two premiere, Trigon. Um, so, to get a little literary, mm -hmm. it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Yes. I think this is the best of episodes, the worst of episodes, and I cannot wait to talk about with you. Yes, because as we've noticed um, online, fan reaction to this has been decidedly mixed. Okay, good. Some people really liked it. A lot of people really didn't like it. And so I will be curious to gauge your reaction to this. We've got four topics we'll want to talk about today. Good. But uh, we'll try and run this down and try to address a lot of concerns I think a lot of people have had about various episodes. Um, we'll try and hit as many as we can. And, uh, you know, we've, and, got, we've got some feedback from our regular. Oh, uh, good. So, you know, in our Tell It to Titan Talk section. So stay tuned later for that. And, and to pull back the curtain even yes. further, as I was watching this a second time, um, as Charles knows, my wife broke her ankle, and so I've been on nursemaid duty. So Friday being the Friday after Thanksgiving, we were off work anyway. I got to queue up Titans normally earlier than I normally would. And uh, then I rewatched it last night, and I sent Charles 16 questions slash complaints <laughs> Plus comments about the series. So uh, we'll be weaving those in and around our discussion, but I cannot. I, do, do you want to kind of how you feel about it or you want to just dive directly into the topics? Well, well first, I want to get your general reaction before we get into our topics. And I'll talk about my general reaction. There's a lot of good in this. Yes. I mean, there is a lot of good things in this. Um. And and if I just was, um, and and it would be impossible for this to be a standalone episode, right? Right. Yes. But if it was a standalone episode, I would really 
love this thing because there's some great fight scenes. There's some great dialogue. There's good interactions with the character development. But when you think of it in context of the season, right, there are plot holes big enough for the Batmobile to drive through. <laughs> so Slightly. hence my tale of two cities, the best of times, worst of times. It, it just, I, I'm going to have a hard time rating this episode because of my mixed feelings, but I am so comforted that you were here virtually holding my hand yes. as we discuss this. Yeah. So, uh, so everybody, we're going to play support group today. Yes. And uh, we'll try to get everybody to uh, cope with their feelings about the Titan season two finale. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, we'll try to hopefully kind of um, not sugarcoat some things because right. I don't think there, I think there are things that should not be sugarcoated. Over. Uh, absolutely. But, um, but we'll try to, um, focus on what really matters and and try to dive deep a little bit about why people did what they did in this episode. Mm-hmm. All right, so my and take, so, my, my general, okay, take, yes. yeah, my general take on this. Um, essentially, I was let down. Okay. I once again, the Titans writers dropped the ball on a season finale, and not just because they decided to split it into like push a lot of it into the Titans season three premiere like they did last year. But, um, but there's a lot of things, you know, there's, there was for all the buildup we had of the season, there aren't a lot of payoffs in this story and, and what payoffs there are, are very, they fall flat. They're very hollow. They're very short truncated. And, um, and the things that aren't addressed are, are kind of frustrating. And then there's just some new new developments that make you go, what the F just happened, essentially, in my opinion. Absolutely. And and I just, I'm going to take us off a side note for a moment. Yes. yes. I just Googled who, because I did not know who the showrunner was right. for Titan season two, which shame on me. Right. And it's officially Greg Walker. Right. And the only other show, um, so he's the guy that we, we should really be blaming. Greg is, Walker for this is Vegas, the executive producer. He was show creator of the TV show Vegas, the remake and of it, Vegas. Uh, no, the Vegas where um, it wasn't the. This was the one where uh, this was the show where Dennis Quaid and Michael Chiklis were Dennis Quaid was the lawman, Michael Chiklis was the villain, okay. and that was this it's very short run series. Yes. So not a lot of continuity needed in there, not a lot of running parts. Um I mean he's he's worked on the Defenders, he's worked on Extant, Shut Eye, but I, I just I don't think he's a strong enough Showrunner. showrunner right to kind of keep everything going so yes i i am going to blame him for well, at least part of this because, well especially since he wrote half the script of this episode so, yeah yeah you, you, yeah and so i think as we go through we'll be at able least. to talk about what's good and then what's bad so right. okay okay so let's break down our main topics like i said i have four i want to talk about here okay topic number one right off the bat let's talk about nightwing because, hey, yes. this is the episode title, Nightwing. We've been waiting to see Bretton Thwaites finally donning the Nightwing costume. And to their credit, we got to see him maybe for all of 10 minutes, if that. But we got to see him in the Nightwing costume. So I want to get your thoughts on Bretton in the suit. And um, now we're, I'm going to – we'll save our Deathstroke uh, Ravager – discussion okay. for second topic but um we can talk a little bit about the fight at least okay. and um and uh i want to also get your thoughts on dick's reaction to donna's death okay so that's what i'm gonna cover in this segment if that's all right with you i think that is perfect all right <laughs> i i do not mind that we did not get a whole lot of time with him 
in the Nightwing costume because a lot of the episode was everyone out of costume. So yes. I'm okay with that. I think the scenes we saw we saw him yes. as Nightwing were really well done. I think he looked good. I think the fight scenes looked good. I think um, – I don't know if it was that much more – move ability or, or well we did you know, see him the, doing some flips yes and i don't know i think he did that as robin as well but not that's as often okay. not as often yeah i think yeah. he really really showed it i think um his i don't remember the name of the little sticks he used the fighting sticks the scream yeah, yeah that that looks really good and they're electrified. The electronic charge yeah, yeah. I, I think i think what we saw worked really well. I think he presented it well. One of my quotes is Hank's comment about the costume, uh, which I thought was a funny moment. Um, it, and I, it just, I, I, I'm sorry. I wanted someone to say, yes. Wow. Cool costume. What are you calling yourself? Right. I mean, okay, I I want the word Nightwing Nightwing to be spoken. Why couldn't we get that in this episode? I have no idea. Now, are they saving that for season three where Superboy tells, you know, like we talked about earlier in in the season here that maybe Superboy could tell the legend of Nightwing and Flamebird from Superman's lore to Dick when he's just trying to come up with a name, but you would think, hey, I've got a new costume. I should already have a new new code name to go right along with it, right? Yeah, and and I don't like um and you gave I think you gave a really good example last episode. And if you guys haven't heard it, please go back and hear it. But um Charles gave the explanation that there's a good chance that Stu and uh, Dick Lil- and what's Lily, right? Lily, yes. All talked about, and he said, hey, I'd like this to be these colors. Off, and, cam- and, off know, camera. Yeah, off camera. That yeah. that was a discussion, you know, where that came from. Though it is very Batman-ish colors. Yes. Kind of. So, you know, the, maybe. The black and blue. See. Yeah. 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 So, but um, good showing us bad that we didn't get the name right how about you um my take i love i really like the suit i think it 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 works i'm happy with it it could have been a lot worse um as Mm -hmm. some of the costumes we've seen yeah but um but i i'm 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 okay with it i'm good with the costume and brenton looked great in the suit i thought it moved well um, I thought Dick was more acrobatic in his fight with Deathstroke. Um, you know, he's doing a lot more like, you know, um, somersaults over Deathstroke, you know, kind of more more ninja like moves. Um, yeah. And so I enjoyed that. My problem was. We only get to see it for like all of 10 minutes. Okay. You, know, you needed to see more. Well, I needed to see more, um, okay. especially with, you know, building Deathstroke up as this serious threat. And so here it is, Dick Grayson finally, you know, hey, he manipulated, you know, he manipulated Dick into, you know, like checking himself into prison and breaking the law and getting himself a criminal record. So and making himself a fugitive. So you would think there would have been a much more confrontational scene between the two instead of of just a little simplistic. Okay, we're going to throw down for a few minutes, and Deathstroke's going to have the upper hand for most of that. Yeah. So that fight should have been at least five minutes longer, um, much more satisfying. It should have been a much more of a climax than just, like, starting ten minutes in, or, you know, starting very at the beginning of the episode, and then, oh, it's taken care of rather quickly. Yeah, Yeah, and this goes back to one of my complaints. I don't think we needed the Connor Garfield uh, subplot, because you got to go wrap that up too. Right. One of my questions was, Deathstroke dies that easy? How about his healing powers? Right. They just leave the body there? Rose of all people. And we'll talk about that when we get into our Deathstroke and yeah. Rose discussion. Yeah. But, but yeah, Rose of all people should be aware that 
hey, maybe he's not dead after all. Yeah. Unless and, you want and, to cremate him. And I do know. Pretty tough to come back from that. That that Dick says, who's hurt? Right. You know, it's Corey. Okay, you take care of that. I'll I'll handle this. It's my job. Right. Okay, but why wouldn't Donna or someone get out there and help fighting him at the same time? Yes. I thought that was just because he said that. Okay, we're seeing Dick Grayson, one of my oldest friends, gets his butt kicked. Right. But oh, I'm gonna let him do this by himself because he asked me to. Yeah. Um, I, I just I don't know. I didn't buy that at all. Um and why was this... why and why wasn't Dick leading the Titans? Yes. Now the only thing he does kind of sort of do that when um they're trying to um they're confronting Superboy. Yes. And he's working with Raven, Rachel, to um uh, use her soul self whatever to uh to bring him out of his mind control. Yeah, I mean they've got Donna, he's got Donna using the super lasso, the lasso of truth. They've right. got Raven with her dark powers right. kind of connecting him. Yes, he's I've got a plan which is much better than hey Connor. Yes. Another quote by the way. Um Yeah, I've that, got that quote too. Yeah, I mean so I'm okay with that part of it, but it 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 just doesn't Right. I I I agree with you. Now once again, I give an A plus to every, whether it's real or imaginary, Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson discussion See, this season. Yeah. So what yeah. did you what did you what did you make of that scene with with Dick and Bruce? Let's talk about that. I um I I loved everything about it. I loved that uh, the way Ian Glenn played him kind of uncomfortable with his hands in his pocket. Right. Um, you know, I'm not good at giving advice and the kind of, that almost sounded like advice. Have you been working on that one? You know, one of them, yes, I've been saving on that one. No, this one I just pulled out of my butt, you know, um, that their love and relationship. And if you remember, right. When we saw them at Wayne Manor, you made the bold claim, which I agree with of Every TV show, animated movie, comic book, that is one of the best Dick Bruce discussions of all times. Right. And I stand by that, and I agree with this one. I think – they're, they're, The Dick and Bruce in this series, I think, are much more mature. Yes. And, and, and it's well written. Yes. I, I, I agree. It it's, a much, it's a much more adult relationship they have with yeah. each other. And, and I like the idea – even when Bruce is Dick's inner voice that's coming in the form of, of his conscience, Bruce Wayne, yeah. his conscious, that's really well done. You know, so um, I know there's been a few people that um, have had problems with Ian Glenn. Um, I, I have it. I think he has been he has been the Bruce Wayne that this series needed. Yeah. And I also don't think he's overshouted, overshadowed the Titans. I think he's just been right. And uh, a good, a yeah, good so, balance. Yeah. Yes, I think a really good balance. Yeah. He's Ian Glenn seems to have brought a lot of maturity to the role of Bruce. Yeah. And, you know, he's it, not he's not, you know, constantly arguing with Dick Grayson and which is a definite contrast from the comics because the, the two of those those two characters butt heads a lot far more yeah. than they should. And belittling him and not, I mean, he's, he's not really, he's not condescending to Dick, no. which is a nice change of pace, in my opinion. Yes. Like, I'm proud of you. And, you know, that's a great scene um, at the dinner table. And I may be getting into one of the other yeah. topics where he said, right. The only thing Don and I had in common was our parents liking to go, you know, dress up in the night and go fight yes. crime. Yes. Um, and and Bruce kind of sheepishly like yeah, yeah that's, that's you know pretty, that's true he acknowledged that yeah see that's where when their discussion um the suit looks good i'm glad yeah. you and stewart patched it up yeah um wh what do you think you're what are you gonna call yourself and that's when he could have said well i'm thinking you know i'm thinking nightwing 
kind of a combination right. exactly. because you know, he said that much better yep. than Robin. Right. That that's when you could have said it and you could have said, you know, I kind of I kind of feel it's a little bit of you and a little bit of this, you know, discussion. I, I, I just something could have been there. Yeah, it, you know, it would have been. Um, uh, yeah, I agree. It would have been a great opportunity. And again, this is where the Titans writers drop the ball because that moment where, where Dick and Bruce are alone talking to each other. Yeah. That would have been a great place to do it. And it would have had an impact. And, you know, because it was toward the end of the episode, it would have, you know, brought the whole thing together, but they dropped the ball. Absolutely. And, uh, we didn't get that. So, you know, very frustrating. Yes. Um, but, uh, and I, I did, I did like the fact that Dick asked Bruce to stay for dinner and he stayed for yes, dinner. Yes, I did too. So yes. that was nice. All right. Yeah. All okay. right. Next topic. Next topic. So, so, like I talked about, let's talk about Deathstroke here, Ravager, and Jericho. So, all right. so, so we have Deathstroke. Um, he's been planning all season to get the Titans. And ultimately, his big plan culminates in jumping in front of uh, Donna and Corey's car and um, only to have Nightwing jump in at that particular moment. That's his big plan. Yeah. So um, and then Ravager comes in to join the Nightwing fight and then turns in kind of a three way fight. And uh, and then we get a little bit of Jericho. So what are your thoughts on, on this particular, on what was supposed to be the main villain storyline? Um, I had said last week, what are we going to do with Jericho? He's got no body to go into. Right. Um, I, have again, a th- I, have a, I have a theory for season I'm three. I'm going to give the writers credit yes. that if they do nothing else but um, have them um, – the actress who plays Rose Chelsea Zhang, yeah. yeah, play both parts, right? The way she did there, that's not bad. It sucks for the actor who's um, Chella Man, yeah, yeah. But I guess you could always show him in that men- inside men- in that mental in scape, yes. Yeah. So that's not a bad solution till they figure out how to put him in his own body, right? Now, personally, yeah. I would get a hold of te- Cadmus's technology. Yes, and cl- clone, clone a body. Him, clone yes. a body for him, and then he could return yeah. to his own body. Yeah, but overall, I think that was, I thought that was well done. I was happy with that. Yeah, so. Um, I, I, I liked the fight. I liked seeing uh, Ravenger take on her father, working with Dick. Right. Um, I think she makes that big statement to Deathstroke that I'm yeah. not siding with you. I'm siding with the Titans. The Titans yeah. are my family. I forgave her a little too quick, maybe. Yeah. I mean, there's no discussion afterward. No, no, no. Like, no, there's no. So you betrayed us. We can't trust you. There's no lingering after that. No, we we have no. And and once again, a strong showrunner says, "Okay, Deathstroke is our story this season." Um. Maybe we didn't need – maybe Superboy, could, we can say till season three, you know? Or if you had to have him join, you could have them, but I have a problem with that too. This is – the Judas contract is one of the most beloved, right. highly praised series of Titans lore. Storylines, yeah. Storylines. You, you didn't need to add other stuff. No. What and what you, what I what you yeah. know? Just I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, no, please what, do. My my take on it was that if you're going to introduce the whole Connor and Gar subplot, yeah, it, it should have been a B plot that should have been wrapped up before the season finale. Yes, it should it should not have continued in the season finale to eat into the whole moment with Deathstroke. Right, and I think and both storylines I think suffer as a result of yes, that. Yes, I do too. Yeah. 
that's my take. I mean, we could have done. I, I totally there. We could have done without the whole like, okay, let's focus on Hawk, in you know, fighting, you know, in a cage, cage fighting for drug money. We could have yep. done without that. Totally Ra- done. That, wrap yeah. up the Connor and Gar storyline in the previous episode, then move right in and devote the entire episode to fighting Deathstroke in a big climactic showdown. Yeah, because to mix our podcast here. Yes. Um, you know, Charles and I also on Phantom Zone are discussing Watchmen. Yes. And they're one of my favorite scenes in the Watchmen comic is when Dan looks over to Lori and says, I think we should bust Roshar out of jail. Roshar, and I'm not yeah, quoting yeah, yeah, Roshar, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, how cool would it have been? And you picked the episode, but let's say the end of episode, there's 13 episodes, end yes. of episode 11. Right. We see Dick Grayson. He's in Nightwing. And he's got the other people in Titan Tower. And like, now what? Well, now we're going to break Garfield, Gar, and Connor out of cabinets. Yeah. Cut. Credits. Right. And then episode 11 is all about them doing that. You get the massive fight. Uh, you could still have the whole um, Mercy trying to have the, you know, she's smart enough to know we're, we've set us trap. They're going to come get it. We're going to televise it. That's what we're going to use to drive the price up. That could have all happened in 11. And then you could have like, okay, everything good. And then you could have cut to Deathstroke saying, okay, it's time to pay the piper because they've gotten back together. Yeah. Yeah. One of, okay. you know, one of the things that I think it was great about what Marv Wolfman and George Perez did in the original Judas contract storyline, the way they structured it yeah. was that they did devoted it, um, an entire issue 44 to Nightwing taking on his Nightwing ed- identity, mm-hmm. learning about Deathstroke's origin and Jericho being revealed as a hero to help him rescue the yeah. other Titans and face Deathstroke. Yeah. And then they ended that issue and then culminated it in um, Tales of the Teen Titans annual number three. Yeah. Where you had this big extravaganza, you know, you had Nightwing and Jericho going on, confronting, you know, rescuing the Titans from the hive and, and then the whole combination of the Terra Deathstroke, um, you know, Terra being a traitor and how everybody reacts to that. Right. And so once again, I think the comics did it better in this case. That I they, do too. They structured it better. You know, they, they even in, and this is a storyline that was done over 30 years ago. Yeah. And it's better than what's being told now here in 2019. Yeah. And so I, I think that's a, that's completely on Greg Walker, the structuring, um, now I loved, uh, Rose, you know, she got to fight her father. She was the one mm-hmm. who delivers the killing blow to her father. Yeah. But again, doesn't matter because Rose of all people should know, Hey, he could come back from the dead. Yeah. So nobody's going to talk about that. Rose of all people, isn't going to bring this up. Yeah. No, it, it just, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just there. And then, yeah. and then, oh, okay, that happened. And then we move back right back into the whole, oh, we got it. We we can't really deal with the after effects of this because, hey, we got to go wrap up this whole storyline with Gar and Beast Bo- or Gar and Superboy. Yeah, and I I really did. One of my questions was right. Right. Um, they just leave his body. Yeah. What happened to it? We don't know. Yeah. Is and anybody I guess keeping that... eye eye on it? And so I guess they're saying. Well, um, guess what, people? He's not really dead. We can have him come back. Right. Um, I mean, we're not even um, – they could have at least seen, oh, there's no body. You know, Wintergreen got him. It just – yeah, it, I just you're, – you're totally right. They've had to rush because they've got too much else to do. Right. Now, now to be fair, they may not have known they were going to get season three. When they wrote this and shot it, 
But you know, but but address it somehow. Even, I think that's I think that's bad writing. Yeah. I think um and and we've talked about this before. I know we have. Yes. If you're a writer, you go, I've got to wrap up enough that if I don't get another season, I have answered the questions and then I'll leave just a little something that if I want to build on next. Right. Right? Yes. Um as a writer, and, I know this. Yes. Yes. And I know you do. And and it just it's 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 just I, I you gotta get you got you gotta make what happened before, you know, you've gotta end that and give it a yes. satisfying conclusion. Right. Now if you wanna throw on some little bonus stuff at the end, fine. But you've gotta make that all that build up pay off. Yeah. For example, I, I and I'm sure this is one of your topics. It yeah. may not have been because it's such a small thing. Right. Um, I I don't like the fact that their post scene where we show, um, you know, Corey's sister, the black fire, um, black fire, black fire. Yeah, take I was going. Yeah, I was going to talk about season three setup in our final. Okay. Topic. Okay. Okay. Then I'll I'll wait for that. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's move on. Topic number three. Okay. Since, since we've been talking about Gar and Superboy, let's talk about um, Beast Boy, Superboy, and let's also talk about Mercy Graves, who okay. maybe looking back at the entire season may have been a stronger villain than Deathstroke. Yes. Yeah, and and I think at least she had a plan and carried it off. You know, didn't just say you know like, oh, my plan is to break up the Titans and then confront yeah. them. But, you know, her plan was just like, well, hey, I'm trying to create these super soldiers so that we can sell them for money for LexCorp. Yeah, though I would make the argument, I don't know without Eve, do you have the right formula that you can do other clones, you know, right. uh, or are you just this is a one and done. But, yes, I thought that was a great storyline. Um, I do have a nitpick. Yes. Is the only reason she was mind controlling Garfield is to make him a villain for uh, Connor to fight because I don't think you needed that. Right. I, I don't think, I mean, you know, him fighting a tiger is not that impressive. Well, it was um, kind of so, impressive when he punches the tiger, Gar as a tiger, straight up into the air. Yeah. And then the yeah. tiger, because he cats land on their feet, right? And a lot of spins yeah. around. Oh, he lands on his feet. Yeah. But but still, yeah, you you could yeah. have had a better threat than that, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, why like why not try and kidnap Wonder Girl and brainwash her? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, then, that would have been a really interesting. But I mean, we yeah. did get we did now. We to be fair, we did get that Wonder Girl Superboy fight. Yes. Um. Which was a pretty decent fight for a good portion, although yes. um, I had kind of problems where Donna, Dawn, and Corey are kind of like taking it not very seriously. Yes. You know, they're just kind of like, well, you go talk to him. No, you go talk to him. Yeah, that was – That yes. what, I was like, what is this? Yeah, that was – They're supposed to well, be superheroes. They experience, especially Donna being an experienced superhero and Dawn. Yeah. And they're just like – Oh, oh no, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We need we need the boy wonder to tell us what to do. We right. need our leader. Uh, right. Yeah. It's like <laughs> what is that? Yeah, I agree. Horrible writing. Horrible yeah. writing on that part. Um one thing I do I have a I do have a criticism about, not just because of how Donna and the others were treated, the other female Titans were treated. Yeah. Um where's Eve in all this? Yeah. Rem remember Eve? You know that the 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 one scientist that was working at Cadmus and, you know, hey, had this really strong emotional attachment to Superboy, like a mom, and would presumably be very concerned about him being mind-controlled. Yeah. Where was she? What, and she's, what she happened got out of Eve? Dodge, and she has turned off, right? Where she is she? Not, yeah, I, I totally agree. Did that they kill seems... her? Did they, really, really dumb. Yes. Like, wouldn't wouldn't it have been more effective if, at that moment where where Connor is mind controlled, instead of doing this like soul self triangle with Donna, Dick, and and Rachel to bring Connor back, 
wouldn't it have been more effective if, and especially considering, the, you know, the season as a whole, to have Eve come in at that moment and and talk to Connor and bring him out on his own? Yes, it would have been. I think it would have been more satisfying, but yeah, I, because but, but where was why, he? Why was he? Why introduce Eve if that's the case? Yeah, and why? Why would? Why would Connor listen to Dick? Right. I mean, what about that? Listened, yeah. you know, what about him? You know, what, and why, yeah, like, what is it, what was it about Dick that was so special that brought Connor out of it? Is what you're telling me, right? Yeah, exactly, right. I, I don't understand that. I don't know. Um, and that's why yeah. I think Eve would have been much, made much more yes. sense. Now, was yeah, it just the so actress too. wasn't available that day? Or they just didn't want to? I, I don't know. But I don't yes, get it. I'm right there. Yeah, I agree. I mean, granted, at least Dick got Dick some more scenes, but still. Yes. And it got to be him, he's very, you know, he he gets to be very, you know, well, I, mean, I mean this, yeah, yeah, very, you know, God, this is good. I don't mean dickish, but yes. he is being, you know, the, the leader. Uh, the leader, he is, yes. Yeah, he's the stepping kind up. Of, yeah, he's, yeah, stepping he's up. showing his, yes, absolutely. I just think that was, that yeah. was not well done. Right. Yeah, it's just, you know, it made no sense to me. Now, Mercy, um... Her big punishment turns out to be she gets punished, punched out by Corey. Yeah. And why Corey, of all people? Why wasn't it Connor, Gar, somebody with a connection to Mercy? Well, then you get the you get to have the joke of her. Oh, my hand hurts. Yeah. (laughs) You know, you know, it just Um, it it just made no sense because Corey had who had had nothing to do with Mercy. Yeah. Is the one who punches her out. And and I agree with you. Mercy was a really good villain. Yeah, I I, I think you know and and um and we also we don't know what happened to her. Right. Because all right, she you know Luther's probably pissed that oh yeah. hey Bruce hacked into a, her satellite feed and uh, disrupted their bidding. All right. So is this the right time to bring up the fact? That we aren't going to worry about Garfield's killing streak. Yeah, I think, this is a, the... I think this is a good place to bring it up because. Right, so, yeah, um, Garfield has killed many innocents. Right. And uh, they they cover that a little bit because you know, to... he's reading this heavy book that was in Donna's room i did not recognize the art author whatever her jam was yeah what no what what is it was a it was an autobiography on an artist okay um i'm trying to remember the artist's name frida something yeah but um but very famous artist she's the one with the eyebrows and um the uh so but yeah you saw him he's obviously affected by this yeah and this is on top of the season one where he mauled that guy right where it really bothered him. Right. It really bothered him. And here he's now killed, that he's killed, he's killed even more people. Yeah. I would think easy a dozen innocents. Right. Being controlled. And also uh, the news has reported yes. about a green tiger. Right. But then at the end of the episode, when they're going to stop this you know, bombing. There's this very important threat or, that, they're, that they're walking yeah. to in slow motion. Yes, with like the not, big with, heroes. Yes, and he jumps out as a green tiger. Right. I mean, was there we're no? We're just re- going to ignore where's the, that. Where's the repercussions out of that? No repercussions. Yeah, and that is why I thought he might be the one who would die, because you know they had told us someone would die, and it would have made more sense. Yeah, I mean, I don't get me wrong. Love Changeling Beast yeah, Boy. Love, yeah, I mean this I'm, character is. I'm sure Beast Boy fans were relieved that he didn't die, yeah. and I get that. Yeah, but uh, just how are you? But it would have made more sense than Donna. Because I'm, I've got the same question. My very first question to you was, "What about Dick's prison record?" Mm-hmm. I mean, they they don't even cover that. No, I mean he's yeah. still a fugitive, as far as we know. Yeah, Bruce Bruce hasn't said a damn thing about it. Bruce could, didn't say, "Hey." 
uh, by the way, I exp- I helped uh, to work yeah, to expunge I, your yeah, record. Yeah, I or... took care of this. Expunge the record. Yeah, 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 because you know, technically, he, as you said, he's a fugitive. Yes, he is a wanton felon. Yes, but oh, and then and he, and his identity is public, or at least you know the the his Dick Grayson identity. Yeah, as public, his public persona is a fugitive. So he, it's not like he could just keep using the name Dick Grayson. Yeah. Without being arrested, right? Okay. And so Mercy and her Cadmus people are there. They're right. fighting. Right. Um, Garfield is mauling people. Yeah. Connor comes and fights everyone. But, oh, when they take down Mercy, the people start applauding. Why? Why do they know right, right. that co- these are now good people? There's no reason they, they should know this. They, they, okay, so they stopped Superboy and Beast Boy from their rampage, but they're siding right along with them. So it's, you would think, well, hey. Oh, yay, Titans. Yeah. Well I, done. I just, you know, and and we also don't forget – Connor attacked police officers. Right. It was on the news. Yes. I mean. Where's that repercussion? And and look, I do not want Titans season three to be Titans Law and Order, where we spend the whole season them being on trial. Well, here's a a simple solution for that. Don't have them commit crimes. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like or you know or if you they do commit crimes have it resolved, but yeah. but here yeah just you know all the it seems like the the whole and and obviously I guess we have to blame Greg Walker for this. Um, they feel like they can do whatever they want to these characters without there being any re- repercussions for it. You know, there's no there's no consequences for this for their actions. Apart, well, Dick went to prison, but then he busts out. And he's a fugitive. Okay, then what? All right. And so you could cut to a police. You could cut to a newscast. Right. And you could see an anchor going. In an epilogue. Wow. Yeah. Wow. In an unprecedented press release, the Justice League has announced that um, the innocence of uh, the Titans – They've explained that Superboy and Changeling were under mind control. You know, right. do you believe them? You know, and then you could run into this. I don't care what the Justice League says. I still think you're evil. But you, they don't even pretend. No. Because I'm like, oh, well, we can't have Superman because we don't know what this world Superman looks like. Okay, then show it off camera or something that you at least tried. And then – to be fair, I probably like, would have like, gone like the Justice League issues a statement. Yes, you could yeah. do that. Yes, yeah. Where <laughs> Bruce says, "All right, why well, I, I, you know, the Justice League has released a segment. We're going to be doing a full press, um, you know, PR press blitz. release, PR blitz, yeah, about restoring you guys, um, thing, um, whoever is the, you know." We'll get Matt Murdock to resent, represent you. <laughs> well, that's the wrong. That's the wrong universe. Yeah, wrong but, universe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Although, I know, be, I was although that would be that'd be a really good DC Marvel crossover. Yes, it all, would be. All right. Um, let's move on because we got we got time. Okay. Um, good. So let's move on. Topic number four. I want to talk about. Let's talk about Wonder Girl and Rachel and the season three setup. So. In the process, after in the aftermath, I should say, of stopping Connor and Beast Boy, and them, even after Beast Boy had miracu- like been operated on in his brain, suddenly he's okay again, just like that. Yeah. Um, there was a pylon that that Wonder Girl had struck earlier in the episode during the fight after being punched out by Connor. Yeah. So. Um, that pylon starts falling, electrical pylon. Um, it's about to hit Dove, who apparently isn't nimble enough to just duck out of the way sideways. Because she's not wearing her goggles, because I guess it would cover her up at night. 
So she's got her glasses on. Yeah. You know, so now, ear. so now everybody knows her identity because hey, yeah. her mask is up. But okay, uh, Donna doesn't wear a mask, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, Donna's never worn a mask. Right. So, um, but Dove, who presumably would want to protect her identity, doesn't in full public view. But so Donna has to come in and save Dove who, again, is not able to, whatever reason, get out of the way. Um, She grabs the pylon, and it's because of its electrical, it presumably electrocutes her. Now There are so many. Go continue. You're on a roll. All right. So would it have, you know, like, would it have electrocuted Wonder Woman? I don't think so. So why should it electrocute Wonder Girl? Because they've established... In this universe, yes, Donna is uh, an Amazon. Right, she isn't an adopted daughter because remember very well. You're, yeah, he's Krypton. You know, he's he's you know, you're Amazon. You're, Amazon. Yeah, at the Th- Thessalonia. Well, yeah. So, shouldn't she be able to survive electricity? You would think, right? She's or, t- she's durable enough. You would think, or could. Not Nightwing, yeah, with his brand new uh, costume that yeah. is probably Ele- no they padded. Did, they did say, remember in the previous episode that it was electrically insulated, right? Right. He couldn't. Now, he couldn't. Now he would. He couldn't lift it up because he's not strong enough, right? But but he, could he not have tackled been, Dove and got her out of the way? Yes, or have gotten. Multiple people pulling the tower, and oh, I'm sorry, you have freaking Superboy, yeah, who has just been awoken, right? He's there, yeah. Why and couldn't why couldn't Superboy stop the pylon? Why why wouldn't he have? Right. I mean, it, it is it it, it makes no, no sense. sense. No sense. No damn I mean, sense. No whatsoever. damn sense. <laughs> I, I, I truly, I just sitting there going, really? That's what they're going to do? That, okay, now I will tell you, I will admit, Connor Leslie is by far, I think, my favorite actor on this show. Right. I, th- I mean, I think. Wonder Girl is my favorite character on the show. Yes. I mean, yeah. and, and then the actress who plays her. I, I think is she has nailed this perfectly, you know, from the very first time we met her, um, as your lovely bride said, oh, cause that's one of her favorite characters, right? you know, and it just, it, it, and to lose her it just makes no sense. Or, and, or have they lost her? And I want to get into that a little bit. So, okay. so, so before, let's, let's, before I, before I get into that though, I would okay. so if you were bothered by the, by Donna's death, yes. ima- imagine how my wife Lori felt. Oh yes. Lori, who has been the lifelong Donna Troy fan, who was very skeptical of bringing Donna into Titans for live action, only to kind of be won over by the performance of Connor Leslie. Who is amazing. Who is amazing. And then. They kill her off. And not imagine, even... imagine that reaction. And so imagine my household oh, dealing I can with imagine. this. And not even a good death. I right. mean, yes, she saved people, but there's no way that would have killed her. Right. Exactly. It's a hollow there... death because – Yeah. And a meaningless death because, yeah. sure, she saved people. Okay, that's meaningful. Yes. But that's going to be the thing that takes her out. Now, the reason – though um that i think they did this was that okay um they set up the bit where there's a there's you know like donna's in her coffin and the titans give her over to the amazons to be taken back to themiscira yes now um themiscira obviously the you know the amazons there's a lot of mythological stuff that could go on there Rachel decides, for whatever reason, I'm going to go with Donna because, hey, you know, my powers have been growing. So I'm going to go with her. Why? You're going to bring her back from the dead, presumably? 
Or is something going to happen there? They're going to bring her back from the dead? Because I don't think she's going to stay dead. And I tried to reassure my wife, Lori, about this. But Lori is now like, you know, a hair's breadth or a hair's width from um, dumping the show. now. Yeah, I'm done with this show. Yes. She's that um, close. I don't and blame I, her. And I kept trying to go, look, they'll probably bring her back in season three. Especially because why would Rachel go with her if they weren't going to bring her back? Yeah. So that right there tells me, okay, Rachel's going to do something. It's going to, maybe there's a quest or something involved and she brings Badana back and they come back. But again, it's more Titans being separated from the Titans. All right. So I would be being in the casket bothered me. Yes. If that was the storyline they were going to go through. Right. First off, why didn't they bring her to a hospital? Right. There is no doctor. Right. On staff at Titan Tower. Well, presumably he, she didn't have a pulse. She's dead. But I, I just it it just seemed a dumb thing to do. They didn't have a doctor confirm. Hey, she's dead. No. And to sit there. <laughs> if they had said she's in a coma and we can't wake her up. Right. And that's why we're taking her back to, uh, you know, Themyscira. Yes. Yeah. Themyscira's um, yeah. deceit because their scientists, yeah. their medical technology is, is above, you know, is beyond where we're at. Yeah. Once upon, upon a time, once upon a time in pre-crisis before 1985, yeah. Uh, yeah. they had this thing called the purple healing array. Back in the yeah. old, back in the olden days, but you could have said, "I we don't know," and then, then Rachel could have said, "Well, I'm going because maybe I can help." Right. Um. I guess they had to do it so you could have the orange soda memorial Tribute. dinner. Yes. Uh, I, I just it it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me at all. No. Um, and you it, know, what? and if Donna, remember Donna lost Aqualad earlier in the seat. You know, we we got that story. Yeah. So if anything, she should have had. Where's her confrontation with Deathstroke? Yes. Over Aqualad. Like, yes. wh where's her vengeance on Deathstroke? Yeah. She got none. There was nothing. None. And and if even if there was a fight, and if you were going to kill off Donna, wouldn't Deathstroke make much more sense to kill Donna as well? Mm -hmm. than just yeah. electrocuting her, which shouldn't have killed her anyway. Yeah, I just, I don't like anything about that. It's horrible. I agree with you. It's absolutely it horrible. horrible. Yes. Bad, bad writers. Bad. Yeah. Shame on and, you. Shame. I feel like, the, you know, like the Game of Thrones, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, um, uh, what, I forget the character's name, but, you know, where she d does the whole... You know, walks Cersei down. Yeah, yeah. When uh, doing Cersei, the whole shame, when Cersei is ding, naked. Ding, yeah, shame. Shame. Ding. I wish All I right. had that that uh, sound bite with me. Charles, I know there are stories that if I gave you a few minutes, you could think of. Oh yeah. But I just watched um, last night. I had trouble going to sleep, so I ended up finishing. I had I had recorded Babylon Five, one of the comet. You were the one telling me, right? It didn't. Comet is the one that's reshowing it. Yes. And so I ended yes. up yes. re watching all of it. And I watched Sleepy and Light last night. Great episode. I've seen great, Sleepy great. and Light probably four or five times. Fantastic episode. I'm still sad at the end. Yes. You know, um, there is the scene in Angel where Wesley is dying. Right. And, and, and Illyria says, Should I lie to you now? And she becomes Fred. Right. And he says, there's my girl. See, I'm tearing up. Yes. Just thinking of that scene right, right now. Right, right. Much more powerfully written. Donna Troy, the original Titan. Yes. One of Dick Grayson's oldest friends. Right. Died, and you and I could care less. There was, well, there was, I mean. We I mean, just, we have anger. We don't have sad. Right. Because it made no have, sense. It, it know, makes no sense. Right. You and know, not even. There, there yeah. was no emotion there. because That's it. It's no emotion. 
you know, you, it was, you were just so stunned about the horrible event that you just watched that whole WTF yeah. moment. Absolutely. That you're, you, you can't be sad over it. Right. Because Absolutely. you're just like, what just happened? Yeah. I am right there with you. Okay. Now, 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 um, now of course they did set up season three, kind of like they did with at the end of the season one finale with the whole Superboy tease. Well, this time they tease that Blackfire is on earth. Right. Having taken over some poor uh, innocent woman's body and leaving her kids in the minivan. So as a dad, I don't like that scene. Right. I mean, that that bothers me a lot. Because the kids are left alone in the minivan? Yes. Yeah, yeah that that bothers me. Right. Um, and their mom is just like, where's mom going? And why does yeah. she look like a supermodel now? Yeah. Um, it, Demar- it, Damaris Lewis, by the way. And so I guess that will be interesting. Um, it, why would... I guess because they can't afford to send them to space. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of is that our, bu- why our budget, our budget, to Earth. our budget is so horrible that we couldn't do this cool space epic. Like, because what they're doing, they're going to be adapting presumably in season three is they're going to be adapting the Blackfire saga. Yeah, from the New Teen Titans volume one, number twenty three through twenty five in annual one. Yeah, and um. That was a big, cool outer space epic with the Omega right. Men, and we got to see Tamarand, and uh, we learned a lot about Corey, and it was a great showcase for her. But apparently, because of the budget, we're going to just do this on Earth. Yeah. Okay, okay. But it's not going to be sense nearly, sense. near, near. It's not going to be nearly as satisfying. No, and I have no faith because right. they took. Look what they did uh, with the Judas contract story. Line. Exactly. That's. It, by words exactly. Yeah. Um, there's, there's. No, I'll. We'll stick around. I mean, we're gonna watch it. Right. Uh, there is enough good. Um, I guess you know. We just have um, to hope again that yeah. the next season is better. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've got. I think uh, overall, season three, season two is better than season one. Yes, it was. Yes. Overall. And, yeah. But and, again, we still didn't have a good finale. No. And. And you have to understand, and we've talked about this probably so much that our listeners are going, yeah, I yeah, get it. Shut Jesse. up already. Yeah. yeah but <laughs> the Titans is our origin story. Right. This is – Titan Talk is a personal thing for us. It is a personal thing to us. We want – you know, it, it's, it's, it's when Flash is bad, you get – because yeah. that is one of your yeah. So I take it personally icon. because yeah. I am such a huge Flash fan. Yeah. So like when it has bad episodes and or bad seasons, yeah, I get frustrated because of like, uh, especially being a writer, like I could yeah. have fixed this and I can't because yeah. I I have no power. I'm not part of the writing staff, and, yeah. I, and it's just something I have to deal with. It's like okay, and, I can't do anything about it, so I just have to suck it up and watch it. Or and not. I'm and I'm okay. There are things that I would not have done, but that doesn't mean it was – it's a different writing choice. Yes. Right? That um, – but when there's just huge holes in it, like I would not have made the choice to have Jason be so childish, but that's their choice. And I'm not saying – it's the choice I wouldn't have made, but I don't think it's a bad choice. Right. Though I do ask you, why does he know when the flight was – yeah, how we did, just we just had to have a scene of him. Well, he was trained by he was, he was trained by Batman. Yeah, maybe I can you um, know or, you know yeah. or maybe he's you know kind of stalking Rose from afar. Yeah, so I could buy that. Or maybe Dick has um, him on the the bat phone speed dial. There's a text chain. I was gonna say there's pro- there's, pro- there's there's probably like a texting group. You know, like yeah, that it's like, like funer- that. funeral yeah. is this time. Show up. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't know about Corey's problem powers. Right. We kind of I assume that's going to be something handled in season three. Right. And then the only other thing that we hadn't talked about that I wanted to bring up is. The idea that Rachel somehow made them all see Bruce at the um, Elko Elko Diner. Diner. Yeah. 
I think that's a little bit of a stretch, but it's it just uh, seemed like this weird bombshell to drop at the end. Like, oh hey, you know that whole thing where where Bruce showed up at the diner? Well, yeah. well, Rachel did that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? And then they don't do anything else with it. No, because that was a. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. The Corey and uh, Dawn right. was funny. Right. What? Are you going to question Batman? I mean, so, I mean, I, it, it, it was paid off, but I just don't know. Well, obviously, is- well, obviously they're going to set up their Rachel becoming a bigger threat. Like maybe yeah. her powers are going to get so essentially she's going to go all to use a Marvel term, dark Raven. And maybe that's what they're showing that by her ability to put Dick inside Connor's mind. Right. Um, you know, where they together <laughs> saying Hank Williams, I saw the light. Right. Um, to, to and, get out of the prison. And, and she talks and she talks about, hey, my powers have grown so much now I can turn people's thoughts into reality. Yeah. So that's OK. I'll buy it. Yeah. So. Um, okay, you've answered or let me comment on everything I sent you. Thank you. Did we I didn't miss mean, anything see, else? See, I didn't even read what you because I I just got because of getting this message so late of, of yeah. our earlier recording time. I was just like, okay, I, I kind of skimmed it, but that was about it. Yes. And and so I'm glad we addressed everything on your list. Yes, we 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 yes, I uh, I appreciate it. All right, anything else about the episode before we go into our favorite quotes because we're uh... running long. No, uh, I, I can't think of anything. Uh, any last thoughts for you on that? Uh, no, I've probably said too much as it is. Cause yeah, I know that it, feeling. Uh, we've, we've ranted about this enough. All right, so favorite quotes of the episode. All right, so by far, I, I would not give Mercy the credit. Yes. So I do think the episode starting with her, we're all about good, wrapped in America. But I'm not going to get that quote because I just don't want to give – it, it made me throw up a little bit in my mouth hearing it. So if you have it, great. But I, what I am going to yeah, do, I've got you, it, Kevin, yeah, yeah. please do it. All right. Yeah, so, so Mercy says, this is how it ends. It ends when we let evil win. When we accept it, it not as something to be defeated, but as part of our daily life. When the horrific becomes our new reality. And there's a lot of ways you could apply that quote. Yeah. To, to what's going on these days in real Absolutely. life. It was. Yeah. All right. For fun. Yes. I thought this was absolutely awesome when they're all around and they're talking about Jericho lives. Yeah. And Rachel says, more like scrambled it on the wall, like caveman style. And Don, I don't even know what that means. And Corey, it's a style. The hand roll, the hand rolls used to, 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 I can't speak. Yes. Uh, used to um, draw images on cave walls, usually battle scenes or hunting. Don, no, I meant Jericho was alive. And Corey, oh, sorry. <laughs> I see, just well, the, see that was something like you know a much more innocent Corey yes. from the, from the comics yes. or, or the you know the Teen Titans cartoon mm-hmm. would have said. Yeah, that kind of uh, like innocent, unrealizing. It seems very inconsistent with the the Corey that's been presented to us so far in the show. I totally agree with it, inconsistent, but I thought it was funny. Yeah, but yo, I I think that is a fair nitpick. Uh, one of my favorites, and I think Mercy is a great villain. Right. Should have asked Luther for twenty percent. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay. Uh, Deathstroke saying, telling Nightwing, don't feel bad. It was never going to work. You depend on others for your strength. I depend on no one. Yeah. Very desperate uh, line. Yeah. Bruce saying, it appears bidding is closed for the day. Yeah. Was such a great Sassy. Batman line. Yes. Yeah. Dove uh, telling Wonder Girl, we have a very angry Superboy. Any thoughts? And Wonder Girl replies, other than yelling, hey, Connor. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, or, like, hey, Connor, like that's your. They were saying it's a Nightwing, basically. Yeah. Yes. And then I love when Hank says, things are getting super effing ugly out here. And Dix, 
you aren't going to make fun of my suit. I and just Hank, did. I just did. <laughs> yeah. I just, that was, that was just really, yeah. uh, and then he goes, I missed this. You know, I, I, that was good. That is the Titans we love. Yeah. So I liked Bruce's speech about the hero's duty. Yes. That was really uh, where he says, we do not enter the field of battle lightly, neither in heart nor body nor mind, nor do we exit it lightly. We leave a piece of us behind, and sometimes the cost is of defending the innocent exceeds what we could ever think to pay. There is only one word for this, sacrifice, and whether it be recognized in the present or in some distant time or never at all, this is the hero's duty. Yeah, I like that. That was good. And uh, Rachel with Dick talking about her changing power. She says, you don't understand. My powers are changing, getting stronger. And like, I think I've been actually inside your head. Like I can take your thoughts and bring them to life. And Dick says, replies, I've seen you do some amazing things. And considering what's in my head, that's pretty messed up. Yeah, uh, I didn't write it down, but I love the um, the ghost space ghost, witch. Yes. Is not good in the tropics. I, yeah, I, you know, I, yeah. I love that they call her that, even though Corey is really the. I outer say space Corey's person. from space. Why does everybody keep comparing Rachel? I don't know. To yes, from being outer space. Now, if you want to call her a witch, that's cool. I get that. Yes, yes, but, um, but space witch. Okay, so I'm going to your... let you go first on ratings this All time. Right. All right. Um, I maybe after discussion, I think I might be very generous with this. I'm giving it seven out of ten bottles of orange soda. So um, I originally was going to go higher than that. Yeah. But the more we discussed it, I'm right there with you. I'm giving it seven out of ten speeding bullets. Nice. Because yeah. I did like that scene. Yeah, Connor. Yeah, Connor. I was obviously faster than a speeding bullet, literally. Yes. yes. So that was good. All right. Uh, don't have any Titans Tower news apart from the fact that Titans is going to be back from season three. They're talking in the fall, which again uh, would be about it, September. Yeah. But that's when yeah. that's when Titan season two started. So we might be yeah. you know, like every September now. Yeah, we might be on that yearly schedule if they keep mm -hmm. renewing the yeah. show. All right. Absolutely. So, but we do have some email, and Yay. we also have some uh, Twitter, which I'll talk about first. Okay. So uh, Ann Deacon writes back to us on Twitter. She's been um, has a some random a couple of random thoughts about the past couple of episodes. That I wanted to share. She's at, at Scaper Anya, by the way, if you want to follow her, because she would um, be awesome to follow. Because, hey, she writes in. Um, Anne writes in, says, uh, listening to your faux hawk episode, especially the bit about Adeline talking to Dick, makes it even more annoying that it wasn't him that saves Jericho. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. It uh, is. Yeah, it was. Um, because, you know, she, hey, she asked him to save her son. So... But okay. Um, and then later she about this episode, she writes, I don't know how I feel about 213, meaning season two, episode 13, obviously. Uh, not at all what I expected. I'll give them that. At the moment, I'm feeling underwhelmed. Us too. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what we are, as, as uh, yeah. evidenced by our ratings. Yes. Um, so we do have emails. Stephen Marshall writes in. Hey guys, the season finale was strange. I really enjoyed most of the content of the episode, but I feel like they should have done this in season season in two halves, looking back. First half should have been the Cadmus arc, and the second half should have been Deathstroke or vice versa. It felt like they offed Deathstroke way too fast, in my opinion. Not just your opinion. So they can move on to the Cadmus stuff. And we talked about that. But in saying that, the Dick and Rose versus Slade was a good, really good fight. It was a mm -hmm. good fight. Just a way too short, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, the Connor stuff was my favorite part of the episode. Seeing Connor and Dick in the fields really called back to Superman, the movie where Clark and Ma Kent looked off in the distance to his new future. Yeah, I kind of yes. got that vibe as well. And that was pretty cool. Uh, the truly great part was when the people embraced the Titans. The music mm -hmm. was epically heroic. So he liked that part. Uh, now on to what sucked. <laughs> the way the way he has the way Dawn died, but I think he means Donna. 
Yeah. Yeah. So uh, seriously, that's how you off her. She should have been either been taken down by Deathstroke or Cadmus. It was a truly a waste. Still, I'm sure she'll be back. So um, Stephen's obviously thinking, like me, that uh, she's going to be she's not dead or going to stay dead. Uh, still, I'm looking forward to season three. And now they are a team, the Titans. The tone of the episode felt much more heroic than any of the previous episodes. And I hope they retain that for season three. Oh, and wasn't it great to uh, see Crypto back with the team at the end? Kind, yes. re- kind regards, Steven. I did appreciate that Crypto was there at the end. My question is, when did they go get him? When did they rescue him? Yes. They didn't show it. We just we just have to assume, okay, Connor's back to normal, so they went and got Crypto, mm-hmm. I guess. So a little let down, but, uh, but thank you, Steven, for writing in. You've been great all season and uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, your writing in. And then lastly, we have Jock writing in once again. Hey fellas. I uh, hope you both had a nice Thanksgiving with your family. I thoroughly enjoyed this episode for me. It was the most exciting episode to date. So he really liked this one. Oh, good. So we got a positive uh, on this, uh, more positive. Uh, the character Dick Grayson has special meaning to me personally. I even have a son named Grayson. Oh, nice. 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 It was nice for us to see him grow. I really hope his character is the more confident leader we know he is. The moments and conversations he had with Bruce were touching. It's rare that they have father and son fo- moments like that, which we talked about earlier this episode. Um, the action scenes were great. I do feel the two major fights should have been swapped. The Gar Connor fight should have come first and then Deathstroke as the finale. Agreed. Uh, Donna's death with Donna's death was anticlimactic, but I can accept it and move on. Uh, I think it would have been much more, made much more sense for her to have died at the hands of Deathstroke in the final fight. Something we all talked about. Uh, it would have played off better due to Deathstroke also killing Aqualad. That's something I mentioned. Uh, yes. All in all, I'm satisfied with what we were given. I'm just glad we didn't get a season one style finale. So he's happy that we didn't get that bad of a finale. Uh, I'm happy that they answered the Elko Bruce Wayne get together. I knew it had to be Rachel. Oh, well, I did not catch that. So good for you. Yep. And he goes, I give this episode 9.5 Escrima Sticks. I am so glad someone loved it. Yep. So he that really enjoyed really it. really good. He really liked it. So thanks for another fantastic season. I'll be catching up on your Phantom Zone podcast as soon as I get HBO to catch up on Watchmen. Ooh, nice. You're going to love it. It is It is so good. We appreciate it, Jock, and uh, definitely appreciate you checking out the Phantom Zone podcast. So thanks for the uh, excuse to kind of plug that early. Yeah, absolutely. Time. Yes. All right. And I uh, hope you enjoy it because uh, we had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun talking Watchmen, and uh, and I'm really glad you enjoyed the Titan season finale. Apparently, better than we did. I hope it, hope you weren't frustrated by our uh, rants here. Yeah, um, I hope so. But you know, we've got to share what we think. Um, right. We're not going to sugarcoat it. We're going to call it like we see it. Yeah, and I am so happy that you. Uh, did enjoy it because right. that's good. I don't begrudge anybody for enjoying the finale. Um, yeah. More power to you. I wish I enjoyed it more. So I yes. wish I wish I was right there with you. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, in that respect, if you want to be like Jock and you want to be like Stephen or Ann, um, you can write to us uh, at Titan. Or excuse me. Write to us at Titan Talk Cast at Gmail dot com. That's Titan Talk Cast at Gmail dot com. And you can reach us on Twitter at Titan Talk Cast or on Facebook, Titan Talk the Titans Podcast. Or if, um, you know, if you want to re- give us a review, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, that would be fantastic. Jesse, where can they reach you? Well, you can hear me talk about The Watchmen on the Phantom Zone podcast. It'll be just talked about. Charles and I uh, are currently. Uh, discussing this amazing HBO show. Uh, Damon Lindoff and his crew are doing um, a wonderful job. I, their Watchmen is a standard in comics, and they are rising to the equation, occasion in this uh, season, and I'm having a lot of fun talking about it with Charles. Uh, we are uh, we talk Doctor Who on Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast. Uh, I'm joining Charles about once a month 
to talk about different things. Uh, he has guest companions filling in the other times. We talk New Who, we talk Classic Who, we talk Big Finish Audio. Um, just, um, I just am reminded uh, today is uh, the anniversary of Rosa Park. Um, Parks, plural. Yeah, Parks uh, on her bus uh, thing, and that was truly one of the best uh, modern episodes all times and so you can go back and check that out charles and i have a lot of fun um and uh we're gearing up uh to talk crisis it's getting close there is so much fun and uh trust me there are going to be so many easter eggs and the only person i can trust to capture those easter eggs is my man Charles Skaggs. It is we we may have to do a two hour episode just to cover the episode, the Easter eggs, much I, less the plots. Because I'm that much of a geek. Yes, you I and I especially love it. when it comes to Crisis, one of my all time favorite stories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am, um, and you can hear me. I just finished thirty days of posting on Set Lusting Bruce, uh, Bruce Springsteen podcast. Um, I have a new episode coming up this week where I talk to a guy who runs a grilled cheese food truck right. uh, out in Portland. And uh, Keith DiCardo, uh, the famous science fiction writer, is going to be on the show in a couple weeks. I've done his interview. and we Keith, talked. R.A. Yeah. Deacon Didio. Yes, so we talk yeah, a little cool. bit about his writing as well as his love of Bruce Springsteen. And uh, so all that's coming up. Uh, Charles, how about you? Uh, obviously, at Charles Skaggs on Twitter, at Charles Skaggs on Instagram, Facebook, of course, Charles Skaggs in Hilliard, Ohio. Would definitely appreciate it if you liked and followed me there. Or my blog of Geeky Things. Come on, you. Where is it? Damn good coffee and hot. Damn good coffee and hot, where I talk about all the stuff we talk about here on Titan Talk, including Titans News. Doom Patrol news, comic book sci-fi news, um, news of my other podcasts they do for Southgate Media, including the aforementioned the Phantom Zone podcast, where they do with Jesse, where we're talking Watchmen and uh, having a ball doing that. Um, the you know the Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast they also do with Jesse once a month, and some a bunch of other special guest companions the other weeks, where we're talking classic and modern Who and new Who's. Hopefully right around the corner, so you might want to jump on board if you're not already. And Absolutely. We'll as we talk Series 12 of Doctor Who very shortly. And then also Ghost with the Twin Peaks podcast to do with Zan Sprouse, wife of comic book artist Chris Sprouse, where we talk about all things Twin Peaks, David Lynch, et cetera, et cetera, and lots of pop culture references. So we have a ball doing that. And um, so if you enjoy us here, definitely check us out on our other podcast, Jesse and I. Um, we really appreciate you guys listening and uh, supporting our other podcasts in the process. So uh, next time on Titan Talk, yes, there is going to be a next time because next time is episode 50, our big episode 50. So we got to do something for that, right? So what are we going to talk about now that Titan Season 2 is over? Well, hey, we're going to talk about Titan Season 2 review as DJ Nick makes his Long away to return to Titan Talk, the Titans podcast, where we're going to run down all the episodes we, we've talked about and uh, getting his, his thoughts on Titan Season 2 in the process and uh, kind of look back as now as the season as a whole and talk about more about what worked, what didn't, and um, having a lot of fun going back through uh, Titan Season 2. So... Yeah, everybody, if you've enjoyed our, our reviews, please come back for Titan Season 2 review with DJ Nick. It's our big 50th episode of Titan Talk, so we got we had to make it a little more special by bringing DJ Nick back. And, Jesse, I hope you're looking forward to it. I am. This is uh, a tradition. Uh, we always have Nick on at the end of a season, and so I'm really, really looking forward to hearing uh, his this, thoughts on the season, and uh, it'll give us a chance to kind of summarize what we've gone through. Right. So awesome. Yeah. As we break, we're going to break down the episodes. You know, now obviously we're not going to go in as in depth as we normally do during the week, but or you know, week by week by week. 
but uh, mm-hmm. but we're going to treat the season more as a whole in this discussion. And Nick always brings some great insights, stuff we Absolutely. haven't really can, thought about. Um, mm-hmm. So it's going to be a lot of fun having him back. So he's always a blast, and I think everybody should enjoy it. So Absolutely. So everybody, come on back next time. Titan Season 2 Review with DJ Nick, Episode 50. And we'll see you next time right here on Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.